we're back again for a fresh new Stellaris multiplayer session. Let's get to know our species, the Renegd. Little is known about their true origins. What is known is that at some point, they were no different than what we know as humans. What drove this primitive species forward was a new focus on nature and powerful ways to harness it. One particularly potent flora granted them great health and longevity. It is unconfirmed if this flora was native to their home or of an extraterrestrial nature. The history books don't tell us what happened next. What we do know is that there was a merger. These humanoid plants, calling themselves Renegd, have mastered space travel and now look to expand their seeds to new planets. Behind their immortal leader, Negmind. With all our former players returning, as well as a fresh face, what fate would await the seeds of the Renegd? Would they bring peace to the galaxy, or something else? Um, I'll keep it paused for a bit, so just let me know. Oh my god, already. my start is terrible. Oh, my start is great. <laughs> 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 the perfect start. Two plentiful paradises awaited us just one jump away each from our home system. Not only that, they were size 18 and 20. The plant gods were shining on us today. Anyone willing to say where they're located? Oh yes. Give me a sec. I haven't even looked. I am um, right in the middle in the north. Oh, we're going to be next to each other again then, Vardo. I'm at 11, I'm at 11 p.m. 11 p.m. Sweet, I'm at like, oh, 12.05 maybe? There you go, so you're right next to me. I'll be your vassal. <laughs> <laughs> can you vassalize with the Scion Origin? Good question, let's find out. I'm not sure if you can. I'm around three. I'm right next to you then. Our espionage mission was quite successful. We knew the rough locations of each of the other players, bar Rico. In a peaceful galaxy, what could he have to hide? Rico could only be up to trouble by staying quiet. I would have to keep an eye out for him. In the meantime, I planned to expand north towards safe. Once again, he was playing as a scion, a dangerous origin with a powerful fallen empire overlord watching his back. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Oh yes, okay, yeah, we win. We got the fucking Cybrex, baby. My Gim, <laughs> my Gim Throne just got blessed. It's not as good as it used to be, but it's still good. Barter wasn't the only one that was blessed. Our brave reneged explorers stumbled upon two more habitable planets, sized 14 and 24. That would put us up to a total of five worlds within two jumps of our home system. Our mission was to spread our seeds on these new worlds as quickly as possible. Well, I've got four planets within two jumps and I can't use any of them. <laughs> Always, right? That's how well, this time I can't use any planets. So. I'm role-playing a race that blew themselves back to the Stone Age. <laughs> and they don't trust science anymore, they just fight. Foolishness. Perhaps our plants could enlighten these Neanderthals. The Reneged are very good at science. We have cleared a new nest. And expanding. The first of many new plant paradises. Our leader Negmind will be pleased. Everybody's focusing really hard. <laughs> yep. Some things never change. Technology Too much to do. Received. No time for sleeping. And robots don't sleep. We may not have known Rico's location, but we had our first clue to his identity. He was playing some kind of synthetic. Normally this wouldn't be an issue by itself. Except that the Renegd really didn't get along well with synthetics. They much preferred beings of flesh. Beings that they could live together with. Symbiotically, of course. I found someone's homeworld. Don't know whose it is. Maybe AI? Must be. Who said they were at 11 o'clock? That's me. I think we're about to discover each other. Oh. Oh. Are you investigating me, Tha? I've found your daddy. Not your real daddy, sorry. My, my daddy, the Ilderan Protector. Just in the game, yeah. Table's getting all excited. Yes. Like, oh, you came back to <laughs> After all these years. <laughs> he came back to the store. <laughs> sorry to get your hopes up, little man. 
we were all starting to make discoveries in the galaxy. My plan to travel north and locate safe was underway. While traveling in that direction, we discovered two more planets. A size 11 habitable world, which would be our sixth colony, and a massive size 23 tropical world. This world would be too warm for us to comfortably colonize, but it was definitely worth claiming within our borders if we were ever to unlock the art of terraforming. Same as last game, we've got an asteroid coming in. These <laughs> asteroids hate me. It's the worst when you've got your, um, like, all your ships out scouting shit as well. They are indeed. So I'm rushing them back. <laughs> rushing back. While our small fleet of corvettes rushed back home to deal Ooh, with sure. this rogue asteroid, we had another problem. The beautiful size 24 world that we'd scouted earlier was in fact already occupied. A primitive species was already calling this world their home. And as it turned out, our galactic policies did not allow us to take it from them. Even though we had an army of plants waiting to colonize, we would have to wait a little bit longer in order to modify our first contact policy. Negmind was frustrated by this delay to the reneged's expansion. Getting nervous with this asteroid. It's getting closer and closer. The troops have arrived. Regardless of our primitive problem, we now had five worlds with our loyal plants habiting them, even before meeting our first neighbor. Alright, we're cooking. Okay. Everything's going... Sp I'm feeling a lot calmer than the uh, previous session we had. Time passed uneventfully, and with it, we were able to change to an aggressive first contact policy. We intended to make this size 24 world our own. No, this is like a full blown dead end. And just as our troops descended on the planet, oh, we met our first neighbor, the Velmanax civilization. Our construction is complete. Although our army was small, it greatly outmatched the primitive resistance. And with that, the world was ours. It was a little worse for wear, but it wouldn't take long for us to settle in. Speaking of neighbors, Oh, hello, Leviathan Kingdom of Hell. <laughs> That's a bit dramatic. <laughs> Bloody hell. Go dramatic or go home. Our scouting mission to the north was successful. We had discovered Safe and his friendly sounding civilization. We had a few options of how to deal with our neighbor, and they all revolved around choke points. The first and easiest choke point was Ledermeth. Getting this system was almost a guarantee, so let's look further north. The most advantageous choke point would be Arza, but it was also five jumps from our current territory. It was highly unlikely that we'd make it there first. It would also block safe from expanding. This scion was dangerous enough as it was. We didn't want to turn him into a caged animal. The compromise would be to push for Alord. Although the world present in this system was not suitable for our species to prosper, it was still a massive size 23 world that we might be able to use in the future. To avoid an early diplomatic incident, Negmind commanded some diplomacy with the Leviathan Kingdom of Hell. Excuse me, uh, Leviathan Kingdom of Hell? Yes. <laughs> um, what, what type of homeworld do you have? Like, what, what, what type of worlds do you like? Um, so my, my homeworld is Arid. Yes. Okay. That I... tells me all I need to know. Does it? Okay. Now knowing that they preferred arid worlds, we now knew that they couldn't use this tropical world any better than we could. We would claim this territory for safekeeping. Can't do everything once. Someone's got a sky dragon. Is that one of you guys? I wonder. Me? <laughs> Not me. Maybe one of Fardas' uh, special empires. Uh, there is one of my empires that has a sky dragon. Yeah. There we go. This was troubling. The only reason we'd let the Leviathan Kingdom of Hell take the choke point in the north was because we were confident we'd be able to face any threat we had to the south. Whoever they are, they have a space dragon guarding their homeworld. A creature like that is way out of our league, for now at least. In other troubling news, a new habitable world that we'd found had evidently been a holy world. This meant that a race, likely far stronger than us, found religious significance with this planet. If we were to take it, 
They would come for us and likely end us. Our expansion would have to wait. Oh, well, well. Our unknown dragon neighbor to the south had now expanded right to our border. Our only option for growth was now to the west. We need to find out who these dragon lovers are and quickly. Mm, I've got something hostile on my border. No good. No bueno. Uh oh. What system is that border? Lin Tigger. It's not me. Oh my god, is this uh, Varda's uh, clone empire spot next to me? Oh shit, watch out for them. <laughs> That's strong. They're sitting on a planet I want. We weren't the only ones with threats on our borders, it seemed. Dragon Cult. Sounds exciting. A fitting name for our threat to the south. Would they be friend or foe? Time would tell. Either way, we had enough of a reason to start prioritizing our military. We started construction on more evasive corvettes to make sure that we could defend our choke point if needed. We were lucky that we were able to establish singular choke points to both of our neighbors and got to work strengthening the starbases present in these systems. We still had expansion options to our west and our east, but would we have the time to explore them? Our intelligence showed that these dragon cultists were both militaristic and that they didn't like us. Negmind was sure that they would like us once they were introduced to our plans. It was at this time that we noticed a setback. Wait, I... I just lost a planet. Uh, what? I didn't even see it happen. To what? I don't know. <laughs> well, that's not good. I just noticed it wasn't there anymore. It's the one that I invaded. Oh. Ah, oh, you... Did it rebel? It didn't tell me it did. It, it's got a stellar culture shock thing on it did right you now. Move? Serve it to it so they can be politicians and shit. I, I didn't. I just took it and then built on it like it was normal. Did you move any of your pops there? Well, you need to do that. No. Yeah, they probably just repelled us. That's alright, I'll uh, construction. All I wanted was the planet, so that's all good. Meneth 4, the size 24 tundra world that we had taken from the primitives, was no longer under our control. We'd made a mistake not bringing enough settlers to establish a permanent colony. It was an error that we could recover from and immediately set to recolonizing the now empty world. Now we knew what was to our west. The Entmoot, a plantoid hive mind just like us. Something told us that there would only be enough room in this galaxy for one plantoid hive mind. We would need another strong defensive choke point now. Why, did, why does nobody like me? The secretive robotic Rico was giving more hints about his unlikable robots. But we had bigger fish to fry for now. You now use the Scion cast spelly against the We Got Big Stick Give Us stuff. <laughs> Is that one of your sips? That's me. Oh, that's you. Okay. If Safe had discovered Varda's Neanderthals, it would only be a matter of time before we did too. Information is power. Where are you compared to the Clone Empire? Uh, south. It's in between them. They're real dicks, we should do something about them. I think we should. The nation formerly known as Clone Empire has been destroyed by its enemies. Oh dear. That was quick. Oh, it's now the Clone Theocracy. It's just been taken over. The first casualty in the galactic battle for survival. We would make sure we wouldn't be the next to fall. Do you have a fleet, Deeds? No, not yet. Oh, don't tell him that. He'll come and get you. I'm trying to fix my economy at the moment because I did something really stupid. I'm being attacked already. Yikes. Oof. Why don't I my head of research? Uh, they're just pussying around at the moment. Alright, well my sandwich is complete. We now had a good idea of our immediate neighbours, and the limitations we now had on expanding further. Negmine sent word to the reneged hive to slowly prepare for battle. Out of the options before us, the dragon cult was the most likely to bring war to our doorsteps. We would be prepared to beat them to the punch and enrich their lives with our seeds. But before we could, there was treachery afoot. He just is throwing things at me and seeing if I click yes. <laughs> what? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Propose to trade deal. Right, I, I give minerals. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like a good nice, deal. Nice try. <laughs> Tried that a few games ago, I probably would have just clicked it. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought about it. 
I had this buddy with with who I played a long ship fight campaign, like PvP, right? One time he like beat me really bad in a war. I was like, okay, yeah, I surrender. So I gave him this really long peace deal, and at the bottom it said that he gives me like half of his city. <laughs> so he pressed accept, <laughs> and then he didn't want to play. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Because I was adamant, no backsies. Then you accepted the peace deal. Vada's boneheads were more clever than they let on. He had been trying to trick Safe into sneaky deals that would siphon his own resources towards these big stick wielders. Not only that, Amad gave another story of where he had ruined someone's life forever. As always, Neckmind was right to be paranoid about all his neighbours. Meanwhile, we had successfully recolonized the lost world of Meneth. I took back that world that uh, I lost control of and it's still got my buildings on it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's all working out for the best. Oh, what the... Did you Is just it... lose it again? No, I just realized I have an, a 25% habitability world and I do not remember getting it. I wonder if I invaded the wrong place. <laughs> well, that, that world isn't going to be particularly useful for now. Seems like a Futurama episode. Even while editing this video, Negmind still doesn't know how we ended up with that low habitability planet. Now we really need the technology to terraform. I mean, it's basically the premise for War of the World, right? Mm. Yeah. What are, they, what are they called? Space cows? Those like weird floaty jellyfish things? Amoeba? Yeah. I don't think that's an appropriate term. T -T or something. So many amoebas in my territory. Oh man, no tech is disgusting. It's horrible. I'm role playing that I don't build. I don't build tech buildings, and it's so I've had. I've just capped out at 90 yes, tech. This is so much like, dude. You're a brave man to play like that. Oh, I'm gonna die. You might have to make some allies then. Safe. <laughs> Weren't you trying to steal <laughs> stuff off him before? <laughs> Look at How that salesman smile. I need you to talk to your daddy and tell me. Tell him that I need his help. Can you do that? Right. Is there room in 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 your daddy's life <laughs> is for another, another another child? Is that the terminology? I don't know. I'm not really down with the kids. While Varda begged Safe to help him become an artificial scion, we had one of our systems claimed. What this meant was that one of our neighbors was laying stake to it, and were willing to go to war in order to claim it. And of course. It was the Dragon Cult. Little did they know, we had already been preparing for what was to come. Our special project is complete. Lucky for us, we found something that could help us. We extracted a mysterious warship from a hostile environment. The ship itself was nothing special. However, it was carrying a robotic AI. S875.1 Warform would lend increased tactical abilities to our growing fleet hopefully giving us the edge in future battles. This game definitely has some interesting stuff going on. Like really close neighbors, dangerous neighbors. Not the best planets, but some okay ones far away. Still haven't met any of you guys. <laughs> United Nations of Earth just gave me energy for no reason. Nice. For whatever reason, the United Nations of Earth a newly discovered civilization boxed in behind the Dragon Cult and the Entmood had sent us valuable resources. We wouldn't say no to freebies, though we would return the favor in time by sending them our seeds free of charge. I have to help them out. They're really blocked in. They got nowhere to go. You must be in need of some aid then. Must be. I got this Dragon Cult. There, they got their eyes on me. I have no idea what their fleets are like. Would anyone like to buy some slaves? So we need a collecting market. I'll sell them cheap. No need for organics. What <laughs> flavor? What uh, flavors? They might be assimilated. Psychic. Sorry, I don't want to eat organic slaves. Psionic. Seeing this swarm creep closer. Oof. Is he coming to you, Varda? Uh, I feel like in this case, the best defense might be a huge fleet attacking them, so... I might might just, be what? I might just go attack them. Do you want to do it together? Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm about to go, so if you want to... If you want to oh, go down. Right. I got about 
6k ready to go. That should be enough. Oh, Jesus Christ, I know where it is. As Vader and Amad prepared to team up to fight an unseen threat in another part of the galaxy, we were oh, feeling good about our own position. We were now sitting on eight fast growing planets in total. We had starbase bastions continuing to upgrade on each of our key choke points, and we had a fast moving combined fleet of around 6,000 power. On top of this, we had also been pushing our efforts towards science, which would pay off down the line. When is my daddy gonna give me my. <laughs> You're waiting for your ships, eh? <laughs> I'm waiting for my ships. You know, like your sweet 16, that's when you get exactly. it. You <laughs> that's bring... exactly what it's like, Get my, getting my Porsche at my sweet 16. Yeah. Brings the keys. They are expanding north. Who's that? The, um... The guys. Not the Dragon Cult. The Entmoot? Yes, maybe them. It didn't seem like the Entmoot were expanding to the north. It seemed like we might be receiving some incomplete intel from the Leviathan Kingdom of Hell. We'd get to the bottom of it a bit later and reveal something that would threaten all of us. For now though, we still had the Dragon Cult to worry about. The Dragon Cult, their rival. This will significantly worsen their diplomatic relations. It's funny they just rivaled me at the same time. The trouble bank is safe. They're very far away from me. Well, they're right next to me. I want to know who is to my left. So Can you the, um, see the, the Entmoot? I can't, yes, so that, but that must be who they are. I'm currently... Um, I, mean, I can probably share uh, my vision with you. Let's see. In a risky move, we offered to share vision with the Leviathan Kingdom of Hell. I was too curious about what Safe was seeing in that unexplored patch of space. By doing this, we would also come into contact with anyone that Safe had met up until this time. The rewards of sharing our intel would outweigh the risks. Renekt. Hello. Hello. Oh, that's not them. There's another civilization to the north of the Entmoot that oh, I'm man. dealing with. It seems like Safe hadn't actually properly discovered these mystery aliens. I would have to wait until he did before we could get a good look at who it was in that corner. I took in refugees from Nitraxi who were fleeing the Entmoot. Apparently. Did you say African refugees? <laughs> that's exactly what I said. That is what he said. The Natra Natraxi refugees fleeing the Entmoot. They've arrived on Dante's Inferno. I'm playing the Cenobites <laughs> from the film series Hellraiser. <laughs> oh. The refugees don't know what oh, they're that's in for. a blast from the past. We had two big takeaways from these communications. Firstly, we were even more concerned with the alliance we'd struck up with the Leviathan Kingdom of Hell. Negmind had seen the Hellraiser movies and he knew that relationships didn't end well with such beings. Secondly, and perhaps more importantly, it had been revealed that survivors were fleeing from our neighboring Endmoot Hive. Our worst case scenario would be committing to a war on the Dragon Cult, only to be pincered by aggressive Endmoot forces coming from the opposite direction. Although we were confident in our defensive star bases, it was worrying. Sivers to my left, they're now pushing into Oh, they're called Error. I really watch out for them. I know I say that about every race, but this time I really mean it. <laughs> <laughs> they're my the, uh, determined exterminators. Oh, really? I don't know that. We had a name for our mystery civilization. They were known as Error, a robotic determined exterminator whose sole mission was to annihilate all sapient organic life forms in the galaxy. That would include the Renegade. We didn't currently share a border with them, which meant we would be spared of direct conflict, but it would only be a matter of time before they'd make their move. It's a nice natural border there too, right? So I'm going to stop. Can you see where I've taken to? It's a choke point. Um, it's Vpoc Vortex with an Elgate in it. Yes. That's, That's where, where you're going to stop. Stopping. Yeah, cool. so you can have the rest. And yeah, they're, they're literally everything's dead. Varda and Amad's uneasy alliance continued to flourish. They were picking the bones of weaker civilizations in the area, splitting up the land between them. One thing Negmind knew was that they were both very tricky players. We would have to wait and see if this alliance would last. Well, so much for playing tall. <laughs> you got a vast, vast swell of space. It's not as big as last time. We got a pretty big backyard here for both of us. 
just as we finally began to relocate our fleets to do our final preparations for war with the Dragon Cult, we received some complicated news. Oh. Was about to go to war with the Dragon Cult. Now they've just been. I think the United Nations of Earth own them now. Uh oh. And the United Nations of Earth like me. Uh oh. I think I'm about to ruin a friendship. What's wrong with you? Hmm. Friendship's the most important thing, at least if what I've been told is true. I enter into a research agreement with the Dragon Cult. Now that they're owned by Earth. <laughs> you can do what you want, but um, my goal is to wipe out the Dragon Cult. Just so you know. Oh, you can do it. Doesn't uh, change anything. You just start building a fleet. I think you said that about half an hour ago. Yeah, I got distracted. You have no fleet. Where are thou? It's a secret. It's kind of like that though. Like it, it, if nothing's fucking with you, it's kind of. I'm actually boxed in at the moment, but um, my biggest rival is um, vassalizing everyone around me. So I'm basically cornered on all four sides at the moment. Which is not good. Did you vassalize the clone theocracy? I did. I need some of their planners. <laughs> well, you can't have them. I need them to support me. We were gaining a lot of information listening in on these communications, but it was getting a bit old not being able to see what they were talking about. We needed the birth of the galactic community to help us get in touch with all these potential plant nutrients. <laughs> I mean friends. I've got a geomagnetic storm on one of my planets. Chewing all my energy. I can choose to not protect my drones, but... Oh, that one. Protect yeah. your drones, mate. Hmm? you got to protect your drones, mate. Can't my yeah, I know. I mean, if there were slaves or, you know... Got to wear protection. And finally, after what felt like an eternity, it's time to go to war. Oh, I can't invite anyone this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the last time you fucked me up. <laughs> It's going to be 1v2. Hope this doesn't end poorly. Whoa. I think I'm about to be invaded by these robots. Error. Time to call daddy. Would our war with the dragon cult be successful? How would this damage our good relations with the United Nations of Earth? Would the Entmoot remain neutral while our back was exposed? Was Error about to invade safe, just as we had started our own war? And if they did, who would be next? Negmind wishes you well. Until next time.